This episode is called Asheron Part 1. There's two kind of meanings to this. One is in Greek mythology, Asheron is the name of the river of woe. And I think that that just thematically speaks to the episodes. We're also really big fans of the Alien and Aliens franchise. There's a reference to Escheron, and I think we just thought that that was kind of true to some of the feel of what we were going for in this episode. So we have seen lurkers on The Walking Dead before. They are a big part of the mythology of the comic book. And they're the type of zombies that just seem like they're dead and suddenly they'll awake out of this sort of dormant state. On one hand, it was so much fun to have all the giddiness and fun of all the women being back together at work and to try to have that be contained in a very quiet sequence. It was a very badass female powerhouse. It was physical, there's a lot of action and green screen and a lot of exciting stuff. All those ladies, are, they're great with action. They are some of our strongest action stars. So it was really, really fun just to see them kick ass in this sequence. In the subway, we really love that feel of the long corridors that you're sneaking around and it's just, it's dark and it's dank and there are things moving and lurking. This set was completely built for this episode. And when we got there, we were just so inspired. It was stunning. Getting to see it on playback was really striking. It was such a stark, cinematic look. Filming in the subway tunnels was really cool. Couldn't be down trapped in there. They were very wet, they were very dark. They smelled funny. The art department did such a good job. They were really, really amazing. Jeff and I had a lot of fun with this episode. Their hatred for each other. It was so fun. Fun moments of levity as actors. So during this train car sequence, Jeff and Dean Morgan and I have to have a couple of tense exchanges. We've made ourselves especially susceptible to breaking and corpsing, which is basically just falling into fits of uncontrollable laughter. So whenever we made eye contact, we just absolutely fall apart. And it's unstoppable. And on the other hand, you're acutely aware of how much inconvenience you're causing Anyone who's not in on the impulse with you. Just looking at the armor, it was just exciting to see them for the first time. You know, you feel like a seven-year-old kid when you see them because it looks so cool. When I first met Paola, we hit it off right away. We both kind of came up in New York, but she's the truth. In this episode, we get to see this really cool, iconic moment in the comic books, which is the Wall of the Lost. The art department had set it up and it was covered in pictures from the crew and people on production. So some of it was funny to see people from their past or when they were younger. But really, it was very moving. Not to mention an old photo that they'd used of me from like 10 years ago. We didn't have a huge amount of time and everyone just rallied around. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you for Esther on part two. This episode is called Hunted. This is an episode where we're seeing people from our groups being hunted. And we're also seeing in a storyline some people hunting some creatures or people. I think these first couple of days were so uniquely memorable just because everyone had had such long and uncertain hiatuses. We'd all just been wanting to work, and especially to work with each other, because it's, you know, it's the people that make the place. So, uh, yeah, it was beautiful. The ambush day was actually the first time I got to see the Reaper mask, and, you know, my first thought was... Well, my mask is cooler, but my second thought right after that was, oh my god, these people are frightening. Like, they're, they're just a very imposing group, and I love the way they set it up right at the end of our journey. You know, we think we've made it, and here they are, just ready to take us out. When we did the scene where Jude and the other kids are playing cards in Alexandria, it was so cool. It's called Slapjack and we actually got to learn how to play and we were actually playing in the scene. It was really fun and they're super sweet. We really enjoy getting to see the kids on our show and to 
put them in interesting situations and see them also kind of grow up as they're working on the show. And we really wanted to see Judith and Herschel getting to interact together after they didn't grow up in the same community. There's a hopeful message in it too, which is that children find ways to be resilient. They were so charming together. They really seemed to have a great time doing that scene. We wound up getting some really great sets for this at this abandoned mall, and then we did a partial build at our stages. Our goal was to just make a really creepy, creepy, scary sequence. So it's also just fun to see Maggie just be awesome and be an awesome survivor. I love working with these two, and as actors, the three of us are supposed to be, you know, uh, bathing in the in the grimness of the moment. But by this point, JDM and I can hardly look at each other without without giggling unrecoverably. So well, we had to direct our respective griefs into inanimate objects. That's what we ruin another good scene. We got to learn how to wrangle a horse. I really wasn't good at the beginning, but begged whether I could take one of the ropes back home. And I kid you not, I was practicing so much. I grew up with horses. I grew up horse riding. I love horses. It's very, very magical. The horses idea kind of had been kicking around for a while. We've seen them train them, so clearly they go out and do it. But how do they go about catching them? They turned it into this really like sweet story of these women trying to support each other through this tough time and the horses sort of are this source of hope for Alexandria. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't miss the next one. This episode is called Rendition. It's a military term used when an armed force renders their subject, which means to interrogate them, to try to break them down. It's what the Reapers are doing to Daryl, but it's also what Daryl is doing to Leah, trying to see if he can get any information out of her or try to turn her or break her. It can also mean a performance or interpretation, and a lot of what's happening in this episode are performances where are Reapers who are trying to show how deadly they are, and Daryl who is undercover so that he can get what he needs for his people. Working with Lynn, who plays Leah, was really great. I think she's a really great actress. She brings a lot to the role that they wrote for her. Leah is a reaper, and part of the reason why I love taking this job is because I knew it would be such a surprise for the audience and so controversial. I have had such a blast coming back to work with Norman. He's such a committed, focused, brilliant actor. I love that it's so passionate. Playing a reaper has been really interesting because to play someone who was in such a state of desperation and also like tribal loyalty that other people's lives are compromised has been really interesting and difficult at times. The waterboard scene was wild to shoot. The director wanted to shoot a shot of me getting waterboarded in the foreground and Lynn standing behind in the background so that he could see her face reacting. So I, like an idiot, volunteered to do it. He ended up pointing water kind of on my throat but it looks like I'm being waterboarded. I think it came out pretty well. There's so many times on set where caught between a rock and a hard place and then he just comes up with this brilliant idea and then it boom you solved it in the scene. It's awesome. It was cool to have a relationship that was a little different than some of the others that I've had on the show. As complicated as it was, I kept joking saying she's the worst girlfriend ever. I love, though, that this love story between Daryl and Leah comes in and really, like, breaks everything down. It breaks the whole Reaper world apart and demands that Leah find her heart again. We did this scene where the Reapers test Leah in a burning building. It was actually a really fun crew of this production of The Walking Dead. And not once have I ever felt unsafe. And so it was just really exciting to be working with fire. It felt, it felt so special. Norman Reedus. I've been a fan for years, ever since I saw him in Blade 2. Like, he chooses the unheroic sometimes. And when an actor does that, it's so admirable. And I found that he was just as admirable to work with. On top of that, he's a, he's a lovely fella. So yeah, I belong to Norman Reedus, and I'm proud to say it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't miss the next one.
This episode is called Out of the Ashes. This episode really deals with Hilltop and going to see all the destruction that the Whispers brought upon this community and seeing what our people are doing to try to rise out of those ashes and forge a new future. And we find that things are really, really complicated. Same for the group that's at the Commonwealth trying to get help for those people back home. When we first started shooting, we were just so excited to all be back together. Outside of the show, as actors and as people, we have gotten very close. And the level of support we have for each other is beautiful and something I will always be thankful for. I felt like a family reunion. Yumiko has this pivotal moment where we really see her go into full lawyer mode. I walk in with this huge Aaron Brockovich style speech. I knew how important it was to, to get it right. And I'm so lucky that the group that I'm with are so supportive. And Paula is just like the sweetest. She left me a note just before I shot the scene that I found on my, on my chair. It was just saying, you've got this, you're gonna smash it. And um, yeah, I've kept that note. I love this group. Whenever I got to teach the other kids how to fight, it was really cool seeing them all in a line doing drills and just looking like little soldiers. It was so cute. But I got to pull the knife on Vincent, but I kind of had like a mean moment, and I don't get a lot of those. So it was really cool to get to see the other side of her that she has, where she stands up to those kids. As she grows up, she's in this really odd position of having to be more grown up than she really should be. I think there's a real emotional depth and complexity to our actor, Kaylee, and she's able to play so many different colors. How do kids deal with things that are just beyond what they should really have to grapple with? And how does that take an apocalyptic flavor? I bring Eugene in to the Commonwealth and I bring him over to the ice cream truck. I fail to tell production that I am vegan. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna say anything, you know, new kid at the lunch table. And Josh, he looks at me and he says, hey, I thought you were vegan. I said, yeah, yeah, I am. And so to do another take, somebody comes over and hands me a new ice cream cone, but it's a fake ice cream, looks exactly like the other one. I look at Josh, I got you. I was like, this is gonna be fun. I remember there were three cakes. So we had three shots to get the cake drop right. Ian was a pro. I think he got it on the first one, but they were perfectly good cakes though. Once they were splattered on the floor, I believe a certain producer and director went over and, and had a taste. Maybe I'll share that on my socials later. Working with Eleanor has been awesome. She is an extremely talented actor. She and I fell into this very organic, brotherly and sisterly-like rhythm and energy, and it has been such a pleasure. Lucky for me, Ian is such a brilliant actor that we can just play and do the scenes a bunch of different ways and see what we find. We started shooting in the bakery. It's actually Elodie's Bakery, a reference to the iconic comic book scene when Michonne is reunited with her daughter. And so there's a nod to that. I hope you enjoyed this episode don't miss the next one this episode is called on the inside the major storylines are this haunted house story with connie and virgil where the entire story is taking place on the inside of this weird terrifying house and the creatures that are living within and then you've got this story that centers around Daryl, where he is trying to infiltrate the Reapers and work his way into their trust so that he can help his people. But it requires him to do some really dark things to get further and further in with the enemy. It was so great to have Lauren Ridloff back. She's wonderful to work with. You know, she's just so much fun to watch and just a lovely, lovely human being. We, we loved having Kevin Carroll back as Virgil. Also just really, really fun to um, have these two kind of helming that storyline. Lauren and her team, the way she works, we never skip the beat. Lauren's tough, she's a leader, and she came in open to any and everything within the world of play.
Obviously, the Reapers are just some of the nicest actors I've ever worked with. The kindest people. Yet, we're playing like these bad guys. That's been really cool to experience like that juxtaposition. You're realizing that we have all of that within us and ultimately it's a choice. Like, who are you going to be? Lenny James plays Morgan. He's a very old friend of mine. And when I got this job, I called him and he told me it was going to be one of the very best sets that I'd ever get to walk on. And he, was, he wasn't wrong. I felt so welcome there. They're very proud of the show. This really was one of the best jobs I've ever had. I just think Lauren is, she's amazing. She's kind of the perfect horror movie star in this. To me, the best horror, it really is like you're touching on the entire range of human emotion. She just captured all of that so seemingly effortlessly. I'd say it really leans on her and Kevin as Virgil to make that house feel as scary as it does. would set up these extra scary moments that happen where it blurs the line between the script, the intended action, and the reality of it. And so it made it this kaleidoscope world of horror. When we were starting to come up with our ideas for the season, we would love to do like a good old fashioned haunted house horror story. And we've seen people who are cannibals. We've talked about people that Maggie had run across. We've seen the whisperers. So that was kind of the origin was, you know, it's that desire of like, how do we do like a really fun, just almost standalone spooky tale. And then of course, Greg Nicotero and his King B group, they did all the creature design and made these people unique from zombies and have their own sort of terrifying look. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't miss the next one. This episode is called Promises Broken. In the various storylines, you're kind of dealing with this idea of what are the promises that people make to each other. With Maggie and Negan, there's this important moment where Negan asks her promise that if he helps her on this mission, that she'll just let him be. And is that a promise that Maggie can keep? With Hornsby at the Commonwealth, how is he working his levers of power on behalf of our people and what promises do they need to make? And you also have Daryl really feeling out the, uh, are the Reapers exactly what she thought she signed on for? Has Pope broken his promise to his people? Ian and Seth, man, those guys are just so incredible to work with. And Seth, he brings such an intensity to his work and everything is really specific. But then off camera, he's liable to break out in song at any given time. And JDM, he's just hilarious. He tells stories from his life and about his family. He brings a, a nice levity to the work that I really admire. You know, you are going to be angry and you are going to be tense, but some of the stuff is like a sibling that just makes you crazy. It's an incredibly tough situation for these characters to play, but as actors, it's so I have been a huge fan of The Walking Dead since season one, and I'm also a big, big fan of showrunner Angela Kang, so I was extremely thrilled. You know, anytime you get an opportunity in your career to be a part of a show that has reached such icon status, that is so beloved, that's a pretty special opportunity, and one that I consider myself extremely lucky to have. I had sent Angela Kang an email saying, oh brother, where art thou? Because the who is he? And when the news came in that it was Ian, I was, of course, delighted. We jumped on a Zoom call, I think, first. We spoke for, like, a couple of hours. It was so easy and natural. You know what's funny about this episode is that it was definitely as uncomfortable for me to learn a lot of this and to wear that mask as it was for Maggie in the episodes. It's really awkward and it seems simple. It's not that easy to do. I think to our fans that know that Megan used to be a high school sports teacher. He's always had his patience with children. I think he likes to teach. Even when he was the villain, he was trying to teach people about his philosophy of the world. For us as writers, it makes all the sense in the world that when he is 
in a situation where he now has to teach somebody something, he would actually be a pretty decent coach. I actually think that that is pretty fundamental to who he is. You did good, mate. When we met Eugene, he was so terrible at fighting. The only way he could survive was by lying to much stronger people. It's been fun to see him kind of embrace that side that can be a badass. He takes a very mathematical approach to killing. And I love the way that Josh plays it. Like he really goes in and just kind of like very precisely executes on my first fitting. You know, I was expecting the ragged type of clothing. Oh no, it was racks full of these beautiful dresses and polka dots and I was like we're about to have some fun the first read through we did together as a cast I was sitting on a couple of milk crates and using my suitcase as a desk crazy times but I loved every minute of it I hope you enjoyed this episode don't miss the next one Welcome to this edition of the Walking Dead Episode Diaries. This episode is called For Blood. I think that this episode, there's a lot of things going on. There's zombies, there's that blood, there's war. And then I think there's this idea of family. Whether or not it's actually blood family, it's more about the family ties that you found in the apocalypse itself. But those bonds are just as important and feel like blood to them. I'd already auditioned for The Walking Dead, I think about four or five times over the years. I read for Negan, because I really wanted that one. I heard that they'd cast Jeffrey Dean Morgan in the role. I thought to myself, well, that makes sense. And I hold grudges. Walking Dead was going to be punished for not casting me yet. And I just thought, all right, it's not, it's not going to happen. But then out of the blue, this offer came for the role of Pope. Yeah, I was so concerned about who they were going to cast as Pope. And when I met Richie creatively and just fell in love with him, he's such a wonderful human being and actually so kind and so loving. Well, Working with the wonderful Lynn Collins, very thankful for her. We did a lot of work together on this, and she's just such a great scene partner. I'm not ashamed to say that the very first thing I did when I got to set that day was hit a quick Michael Jackson Driller dance while I had the Walker mask on. Yeah, I feel like my younger self would never forgive me if I didn't take advantage of that opportunity. And it was such a huge scene with so many moving pieces and explosions. And I remember we had just the most spectacular full moon that night. And it was surreal just thinking to myself how perfect everything looked for the occasion of this massive raid scene. We've always shown that Megan has this inherent protectiveness towards young people and Elijah is a young person. It's kind of a nice moment to throw these two people together. They're each seeing something about each other that is different than maybe what Maggie and Megan can acknowledge about each other at this point. Christian is the most wonderful actress, knocking down all of those walkers by herself. She is so amazing. I love her character. She's so fierce. I love getting to work with her. She is one of our best action fighters. She just dove into the role and learned how to handle every weapon. She's always wanting to do new weapons too, so she's just great at all of that. Working with Richie, it was like eating chocolate cake. No take is ever the same, and he's so generous and creative, especially like in scenes with Norman and with Richie. I just kept pinching myself, being like, yes, thank you more, please. The moment where Leah kills Pope, this was so powerful because we were in the middle of a lunar eclipse. That was so potent. It was really powerful to be doing it under this brilliant full moon. The scene where Pope is killed and also stabbed in the back of the head so he doesn't come back as a walker. And I was awfully disappointed because I really wanted to be a walker. I've been working on my zombie act for, for many, many years. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't miss the next one.